Hi all and welcome to another video about Paleo. This guide is all about the weekly challenges for skills and how to complete them as efficiently as possible. You can find them listed under Accomplishments once you hit level 10 in the respective skill. We'll talk you through what we do, share any tips and tricks we have. Oh, and if you have some tips, do share with us all in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about some of the unique housing items you can buy with skill medals, check out our showcase. Before we start, many of the challenges are quite straightforward, like collecting a certain number of basic resources and similar. So in this guide, we'll only focus on the tasks that either require a bit of coordination or hunting for very specific items. Almost all skills have one challenge that requires at least one other player. It's important to know that none of these tasks require you to be in a group. You simply need to hit the resource or target at least once together with someone else in order to get it to count. Let's start with bugs. One of the weekly bug hunting challenges is to catch 10 bugs of any type together with someone. Completing tasks together with a friend is of course the easiest. But alternatively, ask in chat or keep an eye on other bug catchers around you. Simply throw a smoke bomb on the same bug as the other player and you'll both get the catch. Your challenge will normally even update if your bomb narrowly misses the target. Do this for 10 bugs and you're done. By the way, all bug hunting challenges update regardless of you picking up the bug or not. It just needs to be caught. Another challenge is to catch 10 uncommon bugs. Uncommon bugs are those showing with a green background when looted. In Kilima, our favorite option for uncommon bugs is catching garden leafhoppers all over mirror fields. You can also find them around the farm. Other easy options are the garden millipede throughout the meadows as well as the garden mantis along the coast and around the lagoon. Should you favor Bahari Bay, we like to hunt green garden snails in the north, while also patrolling the river for inky dragonflies. And during evenings and nights, lunar fairy moths are an easy catch as well. Now, the more of the challenges you can combine and do at the same time, the faster you'll be done of course. For example, catching 10 uncommon bugs with another player would complete two challenges at once and give progress towards the catch the 30 bugs challenge as well. The next category is cooking. Cooking three meals together is a bit of an exception when it comes to cooperative challenges. This one requires you to either have someone visit your plot or visit someone else in order to cook together. While you can't cook together at a campfire, you can select one of the simpler dishes with easily available ingredients at one of the cooking workstations, like hearty vegetable soup and similar. If you haven't done a lot of gardening yet, you can also buy some vegetables from the store at Baldur's Farm. And meat and mushrooms can be purchased at Seke's general store. If you generally cook food for focus, then the two last challenges are essentially completing themselves. Though if you mainly use non-cooking produce as focus food, then we suggest turning to the campfire while sorting out some items and tasks on your plot. Simply cook some meat, fish or mushrooms as to tick the box on the 10 meals. Doing so will usually also get you at least 3 star quality versions. Now it's time to fish. The challenge that requires teamwork is catch fish together. And here's a little trick. Simply stand within 10 meters of anyone you see fishing. When they catch a fish, you will receive the buff, fishing with friends. As long as this buff is active, all fish you catch will count towards the group activity. You can even go home and fish at your plot if you like, as long as it's active. While it won't feel a lot faster, a stack of these buffs technically reduces your hook time with 50%. In order to catch 10 star quality fish, you need to fish at hotspots as only those give starred fish. Since they spawn randomly, you either do them over the week or do a quick hunt. In Kilima, a good route is to follow the river down south starting below mirror fields, all past the inn. 
then check for some spots along the coast towards the Fisherman's Lagoon. Having done these two challenges, you're likely already close to completing the last one. Let's talk foraging next. If you're actively playing each week, all the foraging challenges are easy. If you are not active and just want to tick the boxes, then focus on the magical trees and complete the other two while doing that one. The best way to find magical trees, or flow trees as they are called, is to head to Bahari Bay just before midnight in-game time. That's every full hour in real life. Exactly at 12am in-game, a flow tree grove will spawn at a random location in the north or south of Bahari Bay. A flow tree grove is typically a group of 4 to 9 flow trees in a small area that entices many people to come and chop them together. Keep an eye on chat as the grove is typically called out by whoever finds it first. Head to the grove and make sure to hit each flow tree once to get the loot when they are chopped. This is the easiest way to complete the 5 magical trees challenge without wasting a lot of time. Yes, you can find random trees having spawned as flow trees, but chances are lower. If you want to learn more, we have a whole guide dedicated to this topic on our channel. While looking for flow groves and waiting for the flow trees to be chopped, you can easily chop regular trees and pick up any kind of plants to complete the other two challenges in the meantime. Next up is furniture crafting. For the three challenges, we need one rare furniture, three uncommon and five common furniture pieces. What is different compared to some other tasks is that the one rare will also count as an uncommon and the three uncommon, you guessed it, will count towards the regular. So in the end you only need to craft two additional common furniture pieces. However, and here comes the trick, there are some fairly easy to craft rare items and if you craft five of them, you are done with all three challenges at once. The in our opinion best item for this is the Log Cabin Planter, as what it requires is fairly easy and cheap to gather. Back to our plot and farming. If you actively use your farming plots to supplement your income, as you should, the challenge for 10 star quality crops and the 30 regular crops will be done in no time at all. If you are not maintaining crop, well then you have to get something planted and watered at least a few times per week. Anything really. And some if not all should be star quality seeds. To get started with star quality crops, you can use other crops and fertilizers that provide you with quality boosts. Then use the resulting star quality crop with a seed collector as to maintain your operation for the future if you don't want to do regular farming for profit. The last farming challenge requires the use of 30 fertilizer, any type works. We don't fertilize any of our crops regularly, so we only do this once a week. If you don't have worm farms producing fertilizers, then you can buy them cheap at Seikis General Store. Now to a trick for saving on weekly fertilizer. This requires you to have at least two types of fertilizer. Simply apply 29 fertilizer of one type on a single farm plot field. Then apply a single of any other type. This will return the 29 previously used fertilizer as they don't combine. So it's very cheap to do this challenge this way. In short, use 29 fertilizer on one crop. Then use the one other fertilizer type on the same crop to get all 29 back and complete the challenge. Let's move on to hunting. If you team up with someone to complete the catch bugs together challenge, it might be a good idea to also tick the box on hunting creatures together. If not in a group, as with the bugs, make sure to target the same creatures as other hunters around you. Even a near miss will update the challenge as long as the creature has been defeated. Also, all hunting challenges update regardless of you picking up the loot bag or not. A word of warning, if you use better ammunition for regular Sonox, Shapas and Mujin, this will one-shot the creature. Just be mindful of not stealing someone else's targets. You don't technically have to hit the creature, a near miss will normally let you share the kill and loot. 
though this can be hard to coordinate. Now for the Hunt Magical Creatures Challenge, there are a few options. Either Magical Sarnok, Mujin or Chapa's Count. However, especially if hunting solo, we find it easiest to hunt Azure Chapas in the south of Bahari Bay. With the right arrows, they are fairly easy to hunt without too much running, and they respawn in around one minute again. We shared all our favorite hunting techniques in our dedicated guide, which should make it easy for you to get the task done. Finally, the mining challenges. The one you should focus on first is loot precious metal. This requires you to find silver or gold ore, which are rare drops from copper and iron nodes respectively. We recommend copper in Kilima, as in our experience it's easier and faster than iron in Bahari Bay. Silver and gold drop from medium to large nodes, but chances are higher with larger nodes. By doing precious metal, you will easily take the box for the mine nodes challenge. Furthermore, there's yet again a together challenge, which simply means hitting and looting the same mining node as another player. If you're playing solo, keep an eye out for anyone else mining while you hunt for precious metal. It's important that you both hit the node before it has been fully harvested by one of you. And don't forget to pick up the loot when mining together, as this is what will update the challenge. A last tip. Precious ore that's found when tilling your garden plot does actually count towards the precious metal challenge as well. So with luck, you'll find a few when gardening daily and can complete the task over the course of the week, or at least part of it. And that's all for our guide about completing your weekly skill challenges efficiently, whether you're doing it solo or not. If you have any tips or questions, feel free to leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up.